double O Quanta. Hey again, Robert184, two R's, two B's from Gundam.tk, and now it's time for a list of all the good and bad things about this kit so that you can make the decision whether it's worth the high cost of importing it. And anyway, I'll throw in a few thoughts of my own at the end. For the negatives, let's start with the elephant in the room, and that is the amount of weight that is tacked onto this guy's left shoulder. And Bandai, in their inner frame design, especially going back to the perfect grade, uh, double O riser, they had this fantastic system where if you're going to have a big hollow cavity there in the chest where a GN drive can go into, they have the idea that you can have a rotating chest mechanism that allows it to go left and right. But I don't think there was enough foresight here, because when you're dealing with weight, this, this much weight, the high grade the shield wears weighs absolutely nothing in comparison. But in this case, eight of the poses out of ten that I was ending up doing is that it was going to slide off to the side. Now in this case it looks like it's tilted ever so slightly and you are able to get it into the center, but if you try to have a, any kind of dynamic interesting pose, especially at the top of an action base, bang, his whole upper body is going to get twisted off like this to the left side. And even more disappointing to me with that is uh, after I made my MS video, I, when I was experimenting with different things on the action base, the GN Sword 5, despite the fact that it doesn't look so heavy over here, was having huge weight issues on the action base. So in addition to his body being skewed off, you're also not going to be able to have the sword in any position outside of this with any confidence. And that's not even getting into the buster aspects. But speaking of the sword and the rifle when they're in their massive buster sword things, I have to sort of give it a bit of a pass for that because you can't really expect a giant sword to work um, when you're dealing with something like this. But where I can complain about is that on the base of the GN Sword 5, there's a peg hole. And you have the action base, which they give you, which is kind enough. I sort of wish that had been in one color instead of two colors. It would have been better and clearer green too, but that's just me. But when you have the Master Grade Red Frame with its giant sword, this hole is further down. So, in this case, you have the action base and the tiny little peg on the manipulator holding everything in the same place, which doesn't really serve as the backup system that the action base should be. So, Master Grade Red Frame gets much higher marks just for the way that you are able to hold up its ridiculously oversized weapon. Uh, the next thing you'll notice as this thing fly, comes around that it's missing a few parts. And that's because the waist armor I find to be just atrocious just in how often it falls off. So of course the lower part is going to fall off and that's a little bit to be expected because you are able to, it, it pops off very easily so that you can mount this sword 5 on the hips. But where I really don't like it is just that if any posing of the legs the whole thing is just going to pop off and it's on such a tiny weak ball joint and it's so close to the hips that that's not going to work. Now the other thing is uh, Earlier I had said please be careful when you're taking the bits on and off of the shield and I'm hoping there's a better trick than the way I went at it but sure enough I ended up breaking this part so when I took off this one the gray thing that holds it inside it was far too tight and I ended up breaking that. Now that's something that I can order but for the majority of people who are buying these things overseas that's not something you're going to have so Bandai should have had either had better instructions on how to take that off or they should have thought of a better mount mechanism because these ones, the two are very easy to take off, but these single ones on the side are horrible. And it's something that now that I've done it and broken it, I probably never want to take it off again. Now, the next complaint for people, especially who are overseas, is getting the LEDs. If you buy the Master Grade XCA Ignition Mode, you're in luck. But now that I have the two of them, of course I want to display all three of sets in a suit side by side but I have to choose which one gets the LEDs unless I put one in the front of each kind of thing because you're not really going to look at them in the back. But it's the kind of thing where I'm sure that the majority of people who are spending the money on a master grade like this from the movie wanted those LEDs and I think Bandai could have put 700 additional yen into the cost of the kit and I think they would have moved just as many units or even more so perhaps because there will be people that will be very disappointed not to get the LEDs. And remember, you can't use the 1 100th double O's. Now, uh, another complaint about the weapons is this one, the Sword 5, doesn't lock into the forearm as well as it should. It has a slide mechanism, which I thought works, and it has this gray part over here. But nonetheless, despite the fact that they did build in some things to try to give it more posability, it doesn't actually end up helping it stay in place, especially when you add in the massive weight of the Buster weapons. And finally, 
My only complaint is the black light does nothing, and of course that depends on which kind of uh, clear plastic they use, but for the people that asked, if you put this under the black light, don't expect anything fancy. I've heard people say that I'm too negative, and I've also heard people say that I'm too positive, but remember to take the what is the important information for you from both of these lists when you're making your own call. So for me, what's the best thing about this? Well, of course, it's a 1-100 lead Gundam. There's no way that I'm not going to buy this, despite any fact that it has a few problems uh, in the balance, etc. But the thing that I really do like about it is the looks. And I've shown off all three, and I've had people comment that this is the best of the three. Of course, you can. everybody has their own opinion about that, but these are non-Gundam fans. But for me, the way this thing, the colors and the blue legs and the the way the chest looks so advanced, it takes Exia and just moves it into the future kind of thing in my eyes. And I really do like the asymmetrical design. The huge shield for me is its best feature. And as soon as I saw it, took the best of the seven sword variation and just turned it into something that is a lot more mainstream. And so for me, the looks are great. The design of the MS, again, same thing. And the implementation, the way that it actually comes across looking, is perfect. And the best part of that for me is the head unit. I think that uh, when you're building the head, I was just so impressed with the layers upon layers that you're putting on the sides with the gray parts, the white part, and then the seal, and then the green part on top. Add your own lighting as you will, and it just looks fantastic when it's all done. No complaints now about the long neck. Now, the other positives. The shield swing mechanism, this gray thing up here, that allows you to move the swing, uh, the shield all over the place, I'm going to say it's going to work 80% of the time, and that's pretty good because, as I mentioned, it's very heavy, and because of that, of course, the whole Gundam gets tilted, but despite the shield being heavy, the swing mechanism, I haven't had it fall out of position even one time. So that's good design on Bandai's part. My only small complaint is that it could have gone back a little bit further because it's sort of cool to have him dashing forward and the momentum swinging it back. But uh, outside of that, I'm happy with it 80% of the time. Now, the moving shield, the big step up from this one to the high grade, is just how you're able to open up all of these blades down below. And it ends up looking pretty cool. Um, it even looks like a very small spaceship, as if you detached it. But those kind of details really make this work uh, as a master grade, as opposed to something as the 1 100th, if they did release a non-grade, I'm sure wouldn't have that. I wanted to complain about how this doesn't connect on very well in the back, but literally I've had no problem with it outside of falling once. But it would have been a little bit better if you did have a mount mechanism so you could have the drive out and on display on its own. But again, just the fact that it attaches on so well and that swing mechanism works, no complaints overall. The buster sword attachment mechanism, I was actually very pleasantly surprised. The high grade, of course, has two blades here that you replace when you want to make the buster variants. But in this case, despite the fact that it has these tiny little notches, they don't take away from it when it's just in Sword 5 mode. But when you attach everything on, it fits a lot better than I expected, which was always pleasant to see. And then we get into mobility. What about the legs? These things moving over 180 degrees is just ridiculous. That's really getting perfect grade scale down into Master Grade. And not just that, it's the smoothness and sturdiness of them. It, sometimes you'll build kits and they'll be a little too sturdy. I have some problems with Master Grade Strike Freedom that way. But this one, they're going to go where you want in the perfect position and they're going to feel good getting there. Now, I love to the pop-out condensers. It seems like such an unnecessary thing unless you've seen some of the hobby show where they've showed off some of the Quanta looking awesome. But when you purge the armor and you pop those things out, the fact that it's a green part inside, a green part with a seal in the inside, ends up just giving you the effect of pure greenness and the way they pop out. It's something that I didn't need, but once that I have it, I'm glad that they put in the extra effort. And along that lines, the 3D writing, the fact that you have the writing of the seal and the writing on the clear green parts just adds that 3D effect when you look down at it, and they look great. Now, to go along with the green parts theme, getting two big green plates was probably the best part of cracking open that box for me, just because you know that every single part of this is going to be represented and represented well. And none of the finicky parts, like having to paint your own parts like you do with the high grade or even the perfect grade double O riser. Something I never talk about is the cockpit hatch, but this one was very, very cool with its three-part open mechanism to show you the tiny little sets, you know, that if you put in a little bit of paint, would look pretty good. And finally... 
the bit swords. Something the high grade had was you were able to put a couple of the bits in hand and they looked very good. But with this one, because all three of the bits on each side, so six in total, have their own handles, you can end up pulling off a million different poses and all of them are going to look pretty cool. And all of these things really add to the master grade feel of this kit. You've heard the goods and you've heard the bads. So for me, the final thing always comes down to uh, does this match my image of the anime? And when you see the movie, and I hope you all have a chance to, um, this thing for me does capture that power because of the looks. Now the poseability does not capture that because of the weight issues with the shield. As soon as you try to make anything interesting out of this, it's going to fall out of position with the sword five and the shield skewing the waist. But otherwise, if you just are happy with having something sit on your shelf and look cool, similar to Master Grade Unicorn, I think you'll like this kit. And I think you'll be disappointed if you're looking for something that is perfect grade mobility because those problems really, really take away from it. But there are a lot of good things, and for me, it does a good enough job that I'm quite happy. But then again, as a lead collector, there is no way I would pass this up. So for you, depending on the pros and cons, please make your own comment. And why don't you let me know with a comment down below what you think. Another long review here as Master Grade leads will probably always be. But thanks for sticking with me, and as always, robert184 gundam.tk. Thanks for watching, and your comments are always fun for me to read. I always like to hear what you guys think about the kit. As always, everybody, thanks for watching. See you next time.